Hi everybody! Hi Noga! Hi Gil! <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to another psychoanalyzing video. Today we have a very special character that we all know and love and cherish. You shut up. Sander Clegane, aka the Hound. So as we usually do it, we, t we, we take a character and we look at the character's traumas, past traumas. And if we look back at Sander, at Sander's life, there's a boatload of trauma right there. It's all very, very, very sad. It's very sad. You're gonna need this, guys. Okay. So first things first. At the age of seven, his brother, I would say he was 10 or 11, took his face and pushed it into the fire. And he held it there for so long that six grown men and, or people or whatever had to pry him away from it and his entire face was burned. That got to hurt, that got to hurt. It can be good psychologically, emotionally. I know, I think uh, if, I'm, if I understand psychoanalysis, I think he was hurt by it. <laughs> It affected him. How am I doing? Very well. <laughs> yes. I've been listening in all the lessons. Yes. So please, uh, tell us. Well, I, I guess there's a, a lot in that incident mm. uh, which can okay. cause all kinds of trauma. Let's unpack it. It, it feels like he was blindsided in a way. I mean, he took a toy that... Uh, right. His brother he, discarded. Exactly. He thought it was uh, there for him to use. And it's just a toy, and he's yeah. just a boy. He's just a, it's just a toy, he's just a boy. He's not suspecting anything. He's just doing as you know what he thought was uh, the right thing to do as a and boy. And then... <laughs> exactly. Like, the amount uh, of punishment didn't suit the crime, you know? It was, like, completely... I mean, there's no... Uh, an eye for an eye here. Right, oh my goodness Christ. No way to anticipate this. No way wow. to be prepared for this kind so of thing. So now his entire life he's looking over his shoulder? Because his brother is right there. He's, all the he's exactly. there all the time. There's no safety, you dumb bitch. Uh, having... Uh, being done something like this by your brother... Uh, is also very painful because uh, he's supposed to be one of the closest people to you, the person in your family. Right, of course, he's your bigger he's, brother, he takes care of you. He, yeah, he's supposed to take care of you, but he doesn't. Doesn't. And, <laughs> and he's there all the time. It's not uh, someone that you can just choose not to see right. again for the rest of your life. Right. So. It doesn't seem that, it's like that, that he was punished for it in any sort of way. Mm -hmm. But the worst thing was that it was my brother who did it. And this horrible, so is this horrible, this tormentor is all the time there, 24-7. My father who protected him. Right. And, and we don't get the sense that uh, Sander fought back, retaliated, mm -hmm. stood up for himself. You're not going to do that to me anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he was walking around, like, bully, being bullied from the moment he opened his eyes to the moment he closed them to sleep. Right. Uh, maybe he was bullied in his dreams as, as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. super sad. It's super sad. Also, the fact that he didn't try to object to it, it might mean that he acquired some kind of a helplessness, a sense of helplessness. Can't give up on us! Fuck off! We can't beat them! Uh, right, there's no point. There's it's no point, strong. exactly. He's too strong. Uh, if you want to stay here, then you have to accept the fact that there's a perpetrator uh, in your surrounding that you can't really anticipate what they're doing. They're crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, and... Uh, There's like migraines and like lashes out. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Right, you just need to lay low and not right. do anything to upset him. And you can't go to dad and tell something, anything to dad because his dad is not doing anything. So, mm -hmm. so there's no justice in the world. Fuck the king. No justice, no protector. You know, there's no one there to, to make you feel like you mean something, you matter. People can do these these things to you. Right. It's such an important thing, you know, as a child to to understand how the world works and understand you have a right to exist. And and, and not only that. So his brother, mm -hmm. not only he wasn't punished, he was later rewarded for similar behavior and similar actions. He he became a knight. He became a knight. So if you think about it this way, you maybe understand why first Sander Clegane refused to be a knight. Mm -hmm. Refused. Like, I'm guessing he could be a knight. He's, he's in the Kingsguard, mm -hmm. right? 
So he doesn't want to be associated with that. And he says knights are killers. Mm-hmm. Like he hates knights. And he thinks like there's no honor in this world. Maybe because his brother was rewarded for it and he's a knight. Mm-hmm. So if that's a knight, if that's the, the, the kind of club you want to have, I don't want to hang out with you guys. Stannis is a killer. The Lannisters are killers. Your father was a killer. Your brother is a killer. The world is built by killers. He's not mesmerized by the, you know, the establishment of knighthood. It's not that he thinks, you know, like those people are the best people. They're the prettiest, strongest, wisest. uh, Yeah, they're the best of the best. Uh, He sees them for what they are. They're killers. And how different is it if you are physically abused by your father, Mm -hmm. who is obviously stronger and bigger than you, than when you are physically abused by a brother who's like more equal to you. Right. Does that feel different like for the abused? I I think it does. I think it could be because uh, you have a lot more people in your peer group than you have uh, authority figures. I mean, authority figures in a way you can avoid or do what they say. But with people in your peer group, it's less, I mean, even like with the, the brother, it's not that he necessarily did something wrong by taking his toy, but uh, he was retaliated in a way, you know, that uh, he couldn't anticipate. Uh, so with your peer group, you have mm-hmm. a lot more chances of that happening because the authority figure, it has some rules that you can follow. Here it's like very arbitrary. And, and also maybe it's like more humiliating mm-hmm. if your brother does it and you can't fight back because mm-hmm. you're more or less a similar age right. than by someone who is like 20 years older than you is a whatever a warrior of course is going to beat you mm-hmm. so it's not that humiliating right that's also kind of like a little bit castrating you can say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And definitely he, and he seemed and he's very he became very passive right like of course he kills and everything but in his demeanor he's like very restrained mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. the time very restrained. He doesn't enjoy anything. He's a bit depressed. I'm in it again. My heart is broken. Don't touch me. But he, nothing. I mean, he does enjoy the killing. He's not sexual. Well, again. It's time to drown our sorrows. I'm not done with my drink. Uh, we have this kind of like uh, with the Sansa, right. this a uh, question mark. Uh, Maybe he just like wanted to love her. He was drunk also and just like... I can take you with me. Yeah. Left the battle deserted. Take you to Winterfell. Or maybe that was also his good side, like uh, the protective side, like uh, that came out with Arya also. I'll keep you safe. The, the, the side that uh, wants to have someone in this world to look after. Right, right. I didn't have after. someone to look after mm-hmm. me, so maybe I'm going to look after, after that person. <laughs> None of it would have happened if you left King's Landing with me. No little finger, no Ramsey, none of it. Unlike other warriors and stuff, we don't see him go to whorehouses and stuff. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. maybe like the castration, just like he took it to heart mm-hmm. and, and it manifests itself story-wise by him not being potent in any way and being a dog, just mm-hmm. like being told what to do. Also, there were like in, in, in the books, there were like stories, maybe his brother, the mountain, also killed their dad. Mm. And the, in order to inherit uh, the earth, whatever, <laughs> to inherit the lands. Mm-hmm. And also the sister also kind of died like in mysterious circumstances. And the moment, like the day that, uh, that uh, the mountain became the lord of the lands, that's the day that Sanders said, fuck it, I'm out of here. And that's when he went to be Joffrey's uh, mm. bodyguard. So he knew, so he, like he ran away from that. But then he joined the family that's cooperating with his father. So... Even even later, as a grown man, he's not uh, safe. Right. Even when he has like a place in the world, because this is an, an unjust world. Okay, but I have a place, and even that place is not that kind of safe. That's true, and maybe that's why it was so easy for him to just drop everything and leave when he encountered the trauma again, like the right. fire on the Blackwater, because right. uh, it wasn't worth it for him. Fuck the king. Like in the, it's yeah. like in that second, it was like, is it worth it for me? No, because no. fuck this shit. Here you go, I'm going home. So uh, in a way he became a nomad. I mean, it, it was really an expression of what he's been feeling all along, that he doesn't have a home, he doesn't have a secure right. base. 
and then he manifests it through his wandering around. Right. Right. First he said, okay, I'll cooperate with this world, even though mm -hmm. it's a horrible world. And then he said, fuck it, it's a horrible world, I'll just like, go the other way. Right. Okay, but he, doesn't, but, but, but he does have a code, a personal code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not a thief. You're fine with murdering little boys, but thieving is beneath you. Man's got to have a code. So it's a, it's a cruel world, but he does, it's important to him to, to, make an, to make order in it. I mean, don't get it twisted. I do some dirt too, but I ain't never put my gun on nobody who wasn't in the game. A man must have a code. Right, and we also know that he's portrayed as a, an honest man. I mean, uh, because he didn't die at the battle, you know? It's like uh, the Lord of Light uh, pardoned ah, him. Ah, okay. What he does, he does because of his duty, not because he's sadistic right. or evil. And right, uh, right, right. He has his own code, and part of it was obeying uh, your orders of right. doing this and that. Don't call me murderer and pretend that you're not. You murdered Micah, the butcher's boy. You don't deny killing this boy. I was Joffrey's sworn shield. Not my place to question princes. Yeah. But he doesn't take pleasure in it. But actually, it doesn't take pleasure in anything. And uh, no. right, uh, that's right. That's because it's depressed, as you said. Yeah. She could have made you happy for a little while. There's only one thing that'll make me happy. I think he's depressed, I think... That's my fucking business. We talked about uh, the initial trauma with his brother, but it wasn't just a trauma that began and ended at the point of the, you know, the burning. I mean, he still, have, he still has the scars on his face. So yeah. having scars on your face and just, I mean, it's, it's like micro traumas all the time. It's like uh, it, it accumulates in you because everywhere you go, you see people's faces, you see how they look at you if they're, uh, you know, if they're held back, like if they're, uh, yes. uh, they recoil from you. Right, and right, I mean, right. even, you know, I, I'm thinking about going to brothels and stuff like that. Yeah. He can't even lie to himself saying that uh, those women right. want to have sex with him. Like he feels he's so, you know, so disgusting. So right. th because it's his face, it's like your ID, wherever you go, the first thing that people see is mm -hmm. the worst thing that ever happened to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so you relieve the trauma over and over, over and, and over, over again, again. It, in every single encounter. Exactly. It's oh not just goodness. something that started and ended. Uh, it's all the time. So that killed him. Killed his soul. It killed his soul. And in a way, maybe oh that's why also he wanted to uh, go far away from people. You know, he doesn't want to be around people. He just wants to be on his own and uh, right. be like all tough. And right. But then afterwards, so, so, so we, as he was wandering, he's like... For short stretches of time, he was looking for some kind of meaning, right? Like he found Arya, I said, okay, I'll take Arya, I'll take her from here to there. Mm -hmm. That's my goal, my short-term girl, girl, goal, okay. After that, okay, I'm with these people, I'll just like cut the wood. That's my entire thing in the world, I want, like he is looking, and now of course, in the show, whatever, now he's fighting the good fight, whatever, so mm -hmm. he has this goal and revenge against his, his brother. So he's, mm -hmm. he is looking for some meaning in a world without meaning. So, he, so he's not lost yet. Yeah, he is not lost. He has this, uh, I mean, uh, Victor uh, Frankl, he, he was uh, affected by uh, Freud, but mostly from humanistic, existentialist uh, points of okay. view. And uh, he claimed that uh, what motivates people is the search for a meaning. His uh, famous book is Man's Search for a Meaning. Okay. And uh, logotherapy, he called it. Like, uh, the, we need meaning in our lives in order to keep on keeping on. Right. And uh, the hound keeps ser searching for those meanings. And I think that he's also searching for them in a very positive way. Because, uh, I mean, Alia helping uh, a girl, an orphan girl. You don't want to be alone out here, girl. Someone worse than me would find you. Yeah, yeah. helping uh, these people with wood and stuff. Yeah, and also being part of their community and worshipping something, even right. though he doesn't necessarily believe in it, but he thinks he sees goodness in it. Right, right. Like, like so, so he's still looking for structure, right? Like maybe he, he, he went to be the hound, the dog, because he wanted some, like a job, something. Okay, this mm -hmm. is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's still looking for that. Mm -hmm. Like some kind of structure, like, okay, this is me, this is you, this is what we're doing, we're working together. Mm -hmm. This is, so that makes sense. Yeah. But also, he, maybe he, he needed to do it because that's what he was good at. That's what, that's what he was uh, constructed for, you know, uh, like uh, athletes, you know, you have those uh, uh, tall right. basketball players. I mean, uh, right. tall people that, uh, you know, tall men, but mostly, and right. women also, maybe. So you have to be a basketball player. 
Exactly, right, yeah. Right. So basically, it was decided for him that he had to be a knight mm -hmm. because he's big and strong. Exactly. Uh, man kill a steel. That's your stupid pride talking. It's why you'll never be a great killer. Exactly. Not what a knight, else could a he? Warrior. A warrior. Yes, exactly. What, what else could he do? You know, it's not, there. There aren't any options for him, and he wants to be oh. something else. I mean, uh, he. Uh, but he, all he does, all he knows is killing. Right. So if this guy would come into your office, mm -hmm. sit down on the couch, and you would ask him, like, and, and would ask you, what should I do, Noga? Tell me. Like my initial instinct is just like tell him, go and kill your brother. That will help. <laughs> that will cure everything. Your brother is a monster. Is the devil. Is the source of all evil. The original sin. Go kill him. Afterwards, you'll feel better. What do you think? Could I be a shrink? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> is but, that legal? <laughs> but actually, what you're doing is colluding in a way with his own fantasy uh, that uh, if he gets rid of his brother, then he will get rid of all the badness in his world, you know? Everything yeah. that ever caused him. But, mm -hmm. but it's, first of all, it's a wishful thinking thing because uh, he's gone through his whole life like we said, more accumulated <coughs> uh, insidious trauma, micro traumas because of the okay. way he looks. And uh, there's a lot of pain and agony and uh, patterns that have uh, been right. established. And, and you were always bullied, so now beat this bully. Uh, if he beats like, him, it will still not uh, erase everything that he's gone so through. He still has his face. Yeah, he still has but his face. But it's been better, no? You don't, think, you don't <laughs> think he'll feel better later? Um, I, I, maybe he will feel better for a short time, but he will still be left with himself, you know, and uh, okay. maybe it will be like a very, yeah, I did that and that okay. was cool, but still, okay, the next day, things right. are still relatively Your inner same. brother, your inner brother. Exactly, you've internalized, <laughs> that's what uh, Klein says, that we internalize uh, the bad objects also. Mm. And uh, now they're part of us. I mean, I may have gotten rid of the real, you know, the yeah, actual yeah. bad object, but I've still internalized yeah. them. I think you're just like it's a, it's unethical to to tell a patient that he should kill his tormentor. There so is a slight uh, problem with that. Yeah, I think you're just like <laughs> rationalizing this very fact that it's un unethical, even though it's right in this one. About what about the thing that he had like with Arya and with Sansa? That's something that can help him also heal and like it like it it, it like he became a little bit. Uh, Okay, whatever, in love maybe with Sansa, but with Arya a little bit like a dad or mm -hmm. like an uncle, like a cool uncle, whatever. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. so maybe those kinds of relationships. You think you're on your own? Could also help him out, right? Let me wash it out and help you sew it up at least. Yeah, yeah, because uh, he's now accumulating positive experiences. Could have been a perfect, perfect daughter, daughter for him. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Arya could have been a perfect daughter for him. You know, I mean, as opposed to Ned, who was like, you have to marry uh, a man and have uh, boys. Right, and right, right. He would have been super proud to have this kind of a... Let's kill people together. I don't like crowds. Me neither. So uh, he would have been super proud to have her as his daughter. And that would have also been great for her, you know, is like a, a great uh, experience. But basically what he's doing is accumulating positive experiences with people around him, which is something uh. he never had. So, uh, so you would tell him to keep on keeping on in that uh, direction? Yes, exactly. Think more about uh, his relationships with others and their meaning and what he's doing with his life in that sense. Because we are the sum of our experiences in a way. People who have had really bad experiences, mm. you know, as opposed to really right. good ones. I mean, it, it depends on, you know, right, exactly. Right, right, right. So he has a long way to go. You know, in the, in the books, the way, the way the arc, his arc ends, as far as we know, is just like he's a hermit mm -hmm. in this community, but he doesn't talk. And he's just like doing stuff and he's like totally retired from the mm -hmm. world. From He's not even the hound mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, yeah. So that also fits, uh, I guess... I'm, I'm erasing my old identity now. I'm nobody. Mm -hmm. Also, his 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 uh, also his horse is called the Stranger, mm -hmm. which is also mm -hmm. like the other or the Stranger, whatever Camus. And also, that's like one of the seven gods, like the god of death. Ah, oh, right. And why is the Stranger a god of death? I mean, the Stranger, according to Zygmunt Bauman, 
is someone who is not enemy nor friend. You know, it's not a foe, it's not a friend. You don't know what he is. And so uh, maybe, you know, in that sense, it sneaks up on you like death, you know? Like his brother snuck up on him. Exactly. Ooh, that's deep. That's deep. Yes, the person you live with is your enemy, is your friend. He's unhomely in a way. Okay, okay. So thank you, Noga. If you enjoyed the video, okay. please. So we just have time for one more sentence, okay? Just uh, wanted to tell them to hit like. Okay, okay. No? Yeah, Can and I afterwards we'll finish, okay? Bye, everybody. Thanks Bye. for watching. Yeah, yeah. So if you've been enjoying Goth Academy videos for a long time, you're gonna love the Goth Academy podcast. Yes, we have a podcast now. You can check it out on iTunes, on Spotify, on Stitcher, the Goth Academy podcast. Because it's in podcast form, the conversations can be longer, we can go deeper, we have new collaborators. It's all super, super exciting. So we're not just a YouTube channel anymore. Now, if you content, check it out. Got Academy Podcast.